In this short video, watch how you can go from a boring boxed layout to a beautiful full width hybrid layout in a few easy steps. If that's something that interests you, then stick around and we'll jump right in. To speed up the process, I'll be using core framework as my CSS framework to add in the custom CSS, but you don't need a CSS framework. You can copy the CSS which I'll leave a link to in the description below and then paste it inside Bricks directly or you can use a code snippets plugin. But for this video, I'll be using core framework to make my life easier. The only thing you need to change in the code is the first four items. So change the content width to whatever your max content width for your boxed area is. Then you can change the default value for your first column percentage. Then you can change the gap and the gutter. So those are the four things you need to change. So now let's jump right into the edit screen and see how fast and easy we can get this layout done. So here we are on the Bricks edit page. To speed up the process, I've already gone ahead and I've added in some content. So let's go ahead and preview how it looks like on the front end. So we have a box content area and then we have the text content taking up 60% of the content area and then the image taking up 40% of the content area. But right now we want the image to now break out of that content area and stretch to the edge of the screen while the text content still remains within the box content area. So now let's go ahead and see how we can get that done. So let me go back to the edit screen and watch how quick and easy we can do it. So first, Make sure, like I showed in the previous video where I showed how to do a split grid, that the section has no padding and then the container is set to 100% width using your default styling. But now we're just going to be adding in three class names and we are done. So go to the parent container that is the direct parent of the two columns and then give it a class name of DD Mixed Grid. And that will do the same way like with the split grid to make them into the box content area. Make sure you don't have any ID styling that makes it a flex or anything. Make sure that the mixed grid has enough specificity to change the layout. So once you're done with that, then the next thing we need to do is go to our child containers and then we have to define what we want. So let's go to the first child container. All you have to do is give it the class name of dd mixed grid double underscore so we have already targeted the parent name now we just have to say what column we want it to be so there are about five columns we have call one then we have call one full so that makes it to be stretched so as you can see this is the call one we have call two we have call one full which makes it full width to one side and then call two full which makes it full width to the other side so we'll be using the call one box because this is the box content area so I'll choose that make sure that your columns have a width of 100 percent then i'll choose the image column and i'll do the same thing so dd mixed grid double underscore and then i'll choose do i want it to be called one or called two this time is column two and then do i want it to be boxed or full width. I want it to be full, so I'll just choose full. And we have our layout already set up. The only thing left to do now is to make the necessary adjustments to the parent container. So you want to change things like what is the box content area if you haven't set it already, then the gap between the two columns, then the gutter, as well as how much percentage for the first column. So now let's go ahead and make those adjustments. So I'll go to the parent container. Then I'll choose a control class that I created. You can create a control class or you can use the ID to style it. So I'll use this control class, which is test one. It might be like hero or something like that in your case. Then I'll go to the style tab and all the way down to the custom CSS. Then I'll say root. Then I'll open the curly braces and close it. So the only thing I need to do now is to define those properties. So I'll start with the content width. So double hyphen dd dash 
content max width. It's already set, but I just want to show you how you set it up. In this case, I'm using 1360 pixels. Then the next thing is the gap between the two columns. So that's dash dash dd dash gap. And in this case, it's going to be zero, so zero. But because I'm using this gap value in the CSS calculation, it requires a unit. Zero also needs a unit. So you can just put any unit that you like. So I'll use pixels. As long as there's a unit, it will work. For the first three items, they must have a unit. So the next one is the gutter, dd gutter. I already set a global variable for my gutter. But in this case, you add the values that you chose for your gutter from your style guide. So mine is var dd con gutter. And we get back to our layout. And then finally, now I'll choose how much percentage for the first column. So that is double hyphen dd call one pct for percentage. And then I'll just define what the value is. In this case, it's going to be 60. We can define any value you want, even 50. So 50 for a 50-50 split. So this is what makes this CSS to be superior to the last CSS I showed in my split grid. So this one, you can set any value you like. So if you want it to be 40, or in this case, we want it to be 60. So I'll take it back to 60. And now we have that 60-40 split. So let me save it. And the last thing we need to set is the row gap. Like I showed in the previous video about split grid, once it gets to mobile, it stacks one on top the other, and then the row gap is what will create that space between the two columns. So what you need to do now is come down and just say row dash gap and set a value for that. I'll say something like maybe var dd content gap, or you set a value that you use for your row gap. So now Everything is set up. We can now go and preview it on the front end. So let me save it and preview it. And as you can see, we get the layout that we're looking for. The text is lined up nicely with the top header while the image is stretching to the edge of the screen. And then we have 60% for the text area and 40% for the image. The background color is on the parent container. That's why it's stretching to the edge of the screen. So now let's go ahead and inspect it to see how it is on mobile. So I'll right click, inspect, and watch as it goes down. It now flushes. Once it gets below that value of 1360 pixels, it is now getting the gutter value. And as it goes down, it switches to the mobile view. So it goes stacking one on top of the other. And we get this row gap that we set up and everything just works out well. I know there's no padding here. That's because I didn't set the padding. I set everything to zero. You can just go back to the parent container and set a padding on this container. So I'll see the column. I'll just give it some kind of padding. Just a large value. So let me save it. And I'll go back and refresh. And now we get enough space for this column. While the other column is now having that the gutter is working well for us on mobile. But once we get back to the desktop view, we get it full width. So this is the perfect layout. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please do leave a like, put a thumbs up, and let me know in the comment section so that I know that the video actually helped you and you can request for a tutorial video that you want to see next leave it in the comment section below and i will check out for it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye